My name is Mary Portas. For the past 20 years, I've sold fashion to the nation. What I don't know about shops isn't worth knowing, and my advice has transformed many high street chains, helping them to make millions. Now, I'm turning my attention to small independent boutiques who are struggling to survive. I'm making it my mission to save the high street, one shop at a time. That is next. That is never. I'm gobsmacked. I mean, Absolutely. I am so shocked, I can't actually tell you. You are running this business from a place of total schizophrenic insecurity. I think it's the reality of it. It's, yeah. It's just hits me. If you really genuinely think that you have the right fashion collection, I'll go now. The British fashion industry has been turned upside down by a new phenomenon. The ultra-low budget retailers such as Asda and Primark. The demand for their cheap throwaway fashion has caused near riots in central London. With such fierce competition and rising rents, over a thousand independent boutiques are closing down every year. Before we know it, all our high streets will look the same. We'll all look the same and we just can't let that happen. In order for the independent boutiques to survive, they just have to offer something different. They can't go down the route of mass-produced fashion. But if they are going to offer that customer something else, something unique, they have to understand what that customer wants. I'm off to the trendy North Lanes area of Brighton in East Sussex to help a couple who are completely confused about their target shopper and what they should be selling to them. I can't even go through this, it will take forever. It's half second hand, half new, half clearance, half... It's a mishmash. Couples Soli Danishmand and Tim Price cater mostly for men and women in their 20s. But bizarrely, Tim also designs T-shirts for the under twos. I'll start with the most controversial, if I may. IVF kid, my dad's a wanker. It has had mixed uh, reactions, as you can imagine. The couple pride themselves on being creative. I made that down in the basement. It was supposed to be a shark. But after 13 years running the shop, they've lost their passion and their customers. Things are so desperate they may be forced to close down. I mean, we, we feel helpless. Uh, I mean, short of uh, dragging people off the streets into the shop, uh, we, just, uh, we just don't know what to do. We are, um, you know, taking home less than the minimum wage at the moment. I'm giving Tim and Soli a month of my time to help them get Brighton's bright young things back in their shop. To understand where they've gone wrong, I need to see Juju through a customer's eyes. I've arranged to visit the shop on my own. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I've reached the zoo. Oh, my God, it's got a zebra sticking up the front as well. I don't even get what it stands for. I mean, this, this can't be a fashion. Why's it locked? It's 10.30 in the morning and it doesn't open until 11 every day, Saturday as well. After half an hour of standing in the street, I finally get a chance to look around. Hi. Great, we're open. We are indeed. This shop feels like it was once cool, but now it's just ridiculously out of date. That is naff. That is naff. That is hideous. Would you wear that? Would you wear that? Why would you wear that? The minute you put that bit of naff in, 80% of the people won't come in. Price-wise, they've gone for the absolute lowest end of the market. Fiverr. You might as well write give it away on it. The only way to make money selling really cheap clothes is to sell thousands of them like Primark does. No wonder they're in trouble. Oof. And to make things worse, the whole shop feels like a dingy, dark old cave. See that sunlight? Look at that. Feel the sunlight coming through, but we're not getting it because they've stuck masses of product in front of them. You know, if we just lighten this damn place up, we might have a chance of actually seeing some of the stuff. 
It's not, it feels like it's really some old, like, coming, darling, you know, upstairs for a fiver. That's what this feels like. To add to the dodgy vibe, they're actually mixing second-hand tat and new items on the same rail. Why would you even pick that bag? Why would you take, buy that from someone second-hand? And £20 for that worn-up bit of old fur. Next to the new one, that's £10. <laughs> I can't figure out if this is a fashion boutique or an old second-hand shop. Welcome. Maybe Tim and Soli can shed some light on my confusion. Hello. Hello. Um, first of all, I come in here and I actually think I'm probably walking into quite a kind of vintage -y cool shop. OK. But why have I got this sort of stuff? Why have I got bog-standard, rip-off, high street tucked in somewhere like this? Then I find some sort of odd second-hand pieces that are in here. <laughs> but they're not vintage. No, 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 no. that would be too that's, good. That's my doing. I would like to have this little vintage section ah, at the back. Ah, stop! Vintage. Yeah. Come here, come here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. A Miss 60s bag oh, I know. is not vintage. The wrong word, then, second-hand. No, no. It's not the wrong word. You're doing it wrong. You yeah. are running this business from a place of total schizophrenic insecurity. In order to survive going forward, you've got to regain your confidence and stand for something and stop this running around from bits to pieces, because that is just crap that is yeah. doing nothing for your reputation, yes. yeah. that is doing yeah. nothing for your fashionability. Yes. This shop is a fashion car crash. Clearly, Tim and Soli haven't done any fashion research for the last decade. Until it goes on the rail, you don't know whether something's a seller or no, not. No, you don't know. I don't know. No, you don't know. Me personally, no, no, don't you know. don't know. Um, I mean, you don't know. No, okay, fair enough, actually. <laughs> yeah, know. no, we don't that know. That is the problem. No, you don't know. You're yes. randomly buying and you're guessing, and you've got to know, because you are in the fashion business, aren't you? Yes. Right. No, no, I'm being serious here because this is actually what this is about. When I walk around here, I think, do these people know fashion? Because if you really know fashion, show me. I want Sodi to pick out three items that will tell me who their customer is and what's their style, while I'm going to do the same. Oh. Dilemma. We have six. No. Okay. Right. Tell me who your customer is. On this one, the customer is someone aged between 18 to about 25, even at a push 30. She'd wear something like that with jeans, um, possibly a student, but not necessarily. Could be a working person. I like this one myself. It is very rock chicky. Yeah, that one. And finally, this is what I would sum up Juju as colourful, funky, and cute. Colourful, funky, and cute. Yes. So I'm just going to show you the other you. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. Vera Duckworth. <laughs> At home in her oh. knitted <laughs> jumper. With a second hand, not even vintage, handbag with fur in it. <laughs> and if she really pushes it, she goes for what I can only describe as an undergarment that's faded badly. With a kid that has all Daddy wanted was a blowjob. Is that the taste level you want in your shop? It was me on a misguided day I was is having it? a... No. OK, so no. we've got to decide that, OK? Yes. Because taste is very important mm. in fashion. OK, and that's pulling you down badly. OK. So what's the bottom line? How badly are all these fashion disasters affecting their bank balance? How much do you take a week in this shop? We have been losing about £700 a week. Yes. And you still can sleep in bed and get up and think, that's all right, I'll stroll down. No, you know what it's been? It's been depression, to be honest with you. It's that apathy. It's been like, what's the point, you know? Why am I going to get up early and go to a shop when no-one's going to walk in? How long have you been feeling like that? What, glum? Yeah. For the past year two, and a half, two years, two nearly? Years. Really. Being on the verge of going out of business can get anyone down. If I'm going to help Tim and Soli get their passion for fashion back, 
They're going to have to learn retail rule number one. When I work with fashion businesses, the first thing I do is try to understand their customer, their fashion customer. And instead of looking at the high street and breaking them up into mm, market research groups, I break them up into fashion tribes. What is it about their dress sense that makes one person slightly different from the other? There's one tribe that I call the fashion rebel. And these guys, they don't want to look like the rest. It's all about individuality for them. It's all about expressing themselves in their own way. It's about colour, it's about style, and it's about a fashion statement. Brighton is a stomping ground for thousands of fashion rebels because of its vibrant music scene and huge student population. If Tim and Soli tap into this market, I think they can make an absolute killing. But first, they need to find out why this fashion tribe isn't coming into their shop. Yeah, She's great. Were. Let's yeah. get her. Oh, go, go, look at them. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. We've chosen you. Actually, you too, because you We've look cool. We've chosen you because you look cool, basically. I love your look. It's great. <laughs> Where do you normally buy your clothes from? This is from Primark, but vintage shops sometimes. Yeah. Vintage shops. Do you know Juju? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to shop in Juju more when I was younger. Right. But, um, but why not now? Just haven't been there for a while. Hello. Do you know a shop called Juju? Um, yeah, yeah. I okay. used to shop in there when I was a lot younger, yeah. Hey, that's the second time someone's done that. <laughs> Why is that? Why? Um, it's a bit naff when I went in there, the clothes. Yeah. When did you last look at well, the Well, I window? walk past every day after work. So oh, really? And doesn't... there's never anything in the windows that grabs you? No, not really. OK. Uh, what was that telling you, Tim? Oh, uh, That's telling you your windows are a bloody you. mess, mate. Tim and Soli's problem is that there's nothing in their window that screams out we're individual. They don't think their customer will pay that bit extra for a more exclusive piece. Say I was to say to you, here's a great dress by a new little British designer. It's quite unique to us. How much would you be prepared to pay for something like that? Well, if it's something that I really like, I'd pay like 60 to 100 and something quid. If it's a casual dress, around about £40. If it's more than that, probably about maximum 80 90 Right, OK. Could I just ask you what you do for a living? I'm at college. You're at college? Yeah. And yet you'd spend eighty, ninety pounds on a dress? Yeah. Anything up to, like, £70, £80. Pounds. Are you a student? Thank you. Yeah, I am. You are. Each of those girls said, I will go up to £80 to yeah. get that yeah. dress. Yeah. You know? And it's how you mix that with pieces that are accessible, yes. which is what we've talked about. Excuse me. <laughs> and after an hour of asking, we still haven't found anyone who shops at Juju. I'll tell you what, I'm going to bloody pick someone who does bloody know buying Juju. No, I'm picking the next one. Lovely ladies. <laughs> Can I stop you in your tracks and just ask you a couple of questions? Mm. Do you know a shop called Juju? Um, um, no. This is something we should have done two years ago. Tony, come here. Come here. Why it's do you like... feel so sad? Is it an opportunity? What, what, what is it? I think... Come on. I think it's the reality of it. It's, yeah. It's just hit me. In, in what way is it hit I you? I think I'm that... making excuses. <laughs> I don't think I... The mm. comments hurt. Mm. They've really hurt me. And I think I'm desperately searching for that one person to just say, <laughs> no, I do shop there I know, and, I, I, and I love it and I'm really proud of it. And he... I <laughs> think they've got a really nice owner. <laughs> 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 and I think she's got energy and she's going to turn it round, OK? OK? <laughs> If I'm going to help Tim and Soli sort this out, they'll need a crash course in fashion rebel style. I've sent them to the East End of London, the coolest part of the capital, to do some fashion homework. Right now, there are loads of new trends that Tim and Soli are completely unaware of. So oh, look, 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 that's what the girl wanted yesterday. Oh, look, 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 look. There's new rave, bright acid colours are back in, layered clothing, especially cardigans over T-shirts and shirts for men. Oh, I don't know what's back in anymore, I'm confused. I'm... 
And any good fashion magazine will show you that punk influences and skinny fit jeans are everywhere. Well, you know, this is what we need to be doing. We need to get, we need to get onto that. And I mean, there's so much more in here. Unfortunately, it's all a bit of a revelation for a couple who have been running a fashion shop for over a decade. We, we are definitely looking with a more focused eye at the moment. Look, happy smiley face. Happy Again. smiley faces. That's the T-shirt we saw earlier. Today we were looking through these magazines that probably we, we normally uh, we wouldn't even think about picking up. I suddenly looked at it today and I thought, why? Why, why don't I get this? You know, I mean, it's exactly what we're, uh, we're, we're trying to do. Now they've seen what the fashion rebels are wearing, I'm going to put them to the test. Today, Mix Mag magazine are doing a fashion shoot for a cool new band called Coco Electric. I'm getting Tim and Soli to be their stylists for the day. I reckon if they can style this band, then they've got a good chance of dressing their fashion rebel. Here we are, Mix Mag fashion shoot. We've got Semra, who's the fashion editor, there to help you should you need it. We've got the band Coco Electric. I want you guys to dress them how you think a hot little band in Brighton should dress. OK. Sam, but you've pulled together a mixed bag, haven't you? Yeah. Talk yeah. them through what you've got in there, roughly. Um, we've got a kind of sharp, kind of 60s kind of look. We've got um, just a mix mash, really. The mix that Sam was talking about are good pieces, bad pieces, and some from your shop. And you'll start to see, I'm hoping, when you pull out stuff from your shop, mm -hmm whether this is relevant to this tribe. OK. You know? When you got them standing in and front of you... And also we'll see whether this tribe is relevant to our shop. Surely. No one's relevant to your shop at the moment, Tim. That's why I've got to come bring you here today and sort this out. Well, I would disagree with that. Well, well, if you... No, but hang on, let's disagree, because well, you, if you're they You're not are... saying we don't, we don't have, we don't have a, a tribe at the moment. We, we have regular customers at the moment. Not enough to make you money. OK, OK, well... You, you know, know um... not enough to make you serious business. That is a really important point, Tim, because if you really genuinely think that you have the right fashion collection and the right tribe, I'll go now. So you think you've got a fashion tribe? Who's your fashion tribe that's coming in there now? I think it's more middle of the road at the mm. moment, yeah. with, without a doubt. It's safe, if you like. Not OK, it, I don't want to play it safe all the time, but there are a lot of people out there that want middle of the road. What's going to happen is, unless you make a distinct statement, you ain't going to get anybody going in there, OK? Here's your band. Let's go, you've got That's ten cool. minutes. Okay. Could you get out of my way, please, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Leave it, leave it. Okay. Well, that's what I want to see. I, 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 I like it. I like it. Okay. So you pick it, believe it. I know. It. Okay, I will believe it. So you... Oh, hang on. Now that. Yeah, you're having that. I've decided. I think um, we done not Yeah, it's done. I think. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Hey, Adam. How are you doing? Okay. Right. Let's 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 stand you here. That's yeah. great. So so Tim, talk me through the look. It's great. It's a great look. It's, it's kind of almost a suit with the black, dark jacket. I think it looks great. How do you feel? Um, I feel a bit like Pete Doherty post-rehab when they rehabbed all the style out of him. <laughs> I think that overall it's not a bad job, you know, I think that you've put it together, but it is a little bit clichéd. Yeah. It's not very original. A smart shirt with a, with a tank top that completely and utterly clashes. I, I, Quite like it. Yeah, I think that there's good clash and bad clash, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think yeah. that that clash is just not no, it's okay. not working for me. Right. So far, so up. bad. But can they redeem themselves with the lead singer's outfit? Did you not give Anne any tights? I forgot, actually. Well, she's got such sexy legs, I thought maybe... No, you should have had some <laughs> tights, but... Um, I find this incredibly safe, sweet. A little bit sweet. Yeah, and mm. it just looks very, very high street. It yeah. doesn't look like it's a, a showpiece. The colours are great, and I absolutely and utterly, having looked at it, agree. It's safe, you're right, it yeah. is absolutely safe, because I play it safe. Oh, no, you're safe. Well, you know what, actually, that's the problem. <laughs> You've been safe in everything, you two. Yeah. The look Tim and Soli picked out for the band is clearly not working. Embarrassingly, Semra, the fashion editor, has to step in to save the day. Oh, wow! Here's the band! Oh, my God! It looks great. It looks fantastic. Now, the big question is, though, do you feel confident having this feel in your boutique? Some of it, yeah. Not all of it. Show me what's not all. 
Shoes I like, tights. Uh, yeah, the dress for me is a bit... And the cardigan I wouldn't have. How many cardigans have you got in the business at the moment? None. None. <laughs> and you call yourself a fashion business? <laughs> What is the key uh, thing, piece of the season for a man? Yeah, cardigans. Mm. And cardigans are great as well because you always have them to put over something else, especially for girls. But guys, guys are wearing them this year. Are they? Ah! <laughs> are they? <laughs> are they? <laughs> you know what? Are they? Okay, hold that. Ready? Good. The problem here is that Tim and Soli have been ignoring the trends and only stocking what they like to wear. So, yeah, it's like this. Good. I desperately need to get them to step out of their comfort zone. Stop. Good. Don't move. What I want you to do is to have a collection in there that you're always thinking and it's really pushing you to the edge to pull together and is actually creating a point of view and a fantastic kind of signature for your boutique. Yes. Now, that's going to make you... That's going to give you work to do. That's going to push you so that you're... And if every day you get up and you play safe, you never push the boundaries, Sully. You never push the boundaries. That's a given in life. It's not yeah. just about your collection. It looks like getting Tim and Soli to change their old habits might be harder than I thought. To make things worse, their attitude towards the design of the shop is just as dated and tired as their clothes collection. But I'm hoping an injection of inspiration will give them a kick up the backside. Oh, wow. This mm. is a bar called Lounge Lover. Oh, cool. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. Now, I've brought you here purely for inspiration. Mm. It's fantastic. It's stunning. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. <laughs> What they've done is they've made this a destination, you know? Yeah. It's a talking point. Mm. A visual feast, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Hassan, hi, how are you? Hi, Mary. Nice to see you. The man behind this highly exclusive place is award-winning designer Hassan Abdullah. His philosophy is to create something people talk about and want to be seen in. This can easily be applied to Juju. I think however small the venue is too, you could create little corners, just little little intimate sort of spaces that tells a different story. I think especially with the shop, the most important thing is stories. There's a psychology of colour. Red makes you feel a bit feisty, a bit sexy, romantic and so on. I've used uh, red and pink and then you've painted the wooden parts red and then I've used gels on the doors and it's warm people are drawn to it here straight away it's all about what you want for your clients you know what do you want them to experience when they come in Tim and Soli are beginning to realize they need to get their passion for design back and really transform their shops look we started off with a definite um, image and all the rest of it and we've Added to it badly over the years. We've taken bits away and added Add something bit, that just yeah. it gelled the first time we did it. And now we've done it with no direction. We've just done it because we we've have. done it with no forethought. You have to keep your eyes open. I mean, that's the only way to move forward. <laughs> Otherwise, you stagnate and then you die because people go, you know, I go in there, it's always the same, samey, 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 you know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. A great design is not the only thing that can help sell your clothes. Lighting is key. Britain's high street stores spend £100 million a year on it. Tim and Soli's shop is incredibly dark and dingy and doesn't show the clothes at their finest. To set them straight, I've arranged for them to meet one of the best lighting designers in the world. So I'm going to introduce you to Jeff Shaw. Now, this guy created the lighting for one of the most amazing fashion stores, the Prada store in Tokyo. So what he doesn't know about lighting, let me tell you, isn't worth knowing. Jeff, hi. Hi. How are you? This is Soli. Hello. Hello. Nice and this nice is Tim. Tim. Hi, Jeff. Tim. Their shop is so dark mm. that they're actually seriously considering hanging upside down like two bats in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so well, Jeff... I think it's, it's all about making the products look good and it's a lot about very similar to uh, lighting people. I'm just going to, if you'll excuse me here, put it uh, um, from the bottom. Now, this isn't necessarily bringing out the best in people or the best in the clothes. It really isn't. Could you take it away, please? <laughs> <laughs> if I hold this light above your head, how do you feel you look at the moment? Very shadowy. Right. Well, there you go. This, I mean, a lot of what I'm talking about here is all about what you should be putting in your change rooms, because mm -hmm. it's not that flattering a light. Well, I think it's, 
exactly like our changing rooms. That feels like your changing it room. absolutely yeah. is our changing room. OK, well, let's try a couple of other things to see if we can uh, improve on this. Mm -hmm. There we go. I mean, what we're trying to do here is pick out from a couple of different angles. I think you feel a bit better in this situation. Much better, much more flattering. And that's what you want to do. You want to make people feel good about themselves. The thing is, I, I think, um, although I've, I've realised how important go. lighting is, I've had no idea how to go about it. So this is fantastic to see actually somebody who knows exactly what they're yeah. talking about. Yeah. It looks like Tim and Stoli are starting to see their shop's potential. Now that they're coming around to my way of thinking, I need to tackle their outdated stock. It's time to clear out the clutter. I want you to really think about the future of the shop. I look at stuff and think, am I going to sell this? And if you don't think you are, I want you to chuck it on the floor and you guys are going to do a car boot sale this weekend and get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> I like car boot sales. Just like the good old days, my darling. <laughs> OK. <laughs> This goes without saying to me completely. I'm not going to take that off the on the floor because that's good. OK, fine. What, okay. Yeah. For a man who hasn't changed a thing in his shop in years, Tim is now throwing himself into getting rid of all the old stock. But surprise, surprise, Soli is playing it safe yet again. I'm not him, goddammit! I didn't leave it, just leave it. But they've been selling, we sold all the other colours, it's just this colour. So you've not sold one? No. And how long have you had them? Um, oh. No Thank brainer. You. Thank you. All of that, all yeah, of that. Yeah, well, maybe not that. these three. Tim, they're not, they're nice. How long have we had them in the shop? Not that Sully. long. no, no, maybe no, maybe no, no. For that. Not only is there a mountain of junk upstairs, in the basement there's enough clothes to stuff the local landfill. Oh, oh that's just silly. <sighs> that is silly. Oh, there's silly. another one. There's another one! <laughs> They're going for this. This is great. He is the one who pushes it out to the edge. So it's much, much safer. <sighs> oh, my God. And is that not as well? Uh, there's another one as well. What? <laughs> Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Oh, there it is! I've been looking for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These are my favourite trousers. Do you remember that? <laughs> That'll probably come back from the car boots now. <laughs> come on, you lovely people. Roll up, roll up. Let's have you at this stall. Bargain prices for lovely clothes. Thank you. Tim and Soli are finally making some money, but only by practically giving the stuff away. 50 quid jacket for two pounds today, going for two quid. It's a hard lesson to learn. I mean, every, every shop makes bad buying decisions. It's, it's inevitable. It goes with the territory. But, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff here that we're losing um, a lot of money on. You know, we've made a, we've made a lot of mistakes here. We've taken 250 quid today, but to be honest with you, the stock that we've sold was probably worth about a grand. So it sounds a lot for a boot fair, 250 quid, but we've lost 750 pounds. Tim and Soli know that they've had a random old bunch of clothes in that shop and they've got rid of it. But are they willing to take the next step? Because the next step is about buying in the right fashion, something a little bit more upmarket, a little bit cooler, a little bit edgier. And that means spending more than a fiver on a garment. The, the worry I have is I just don't know whether they're able to do this, you know, or whether they really, really get this. That's a big worry. I'm giving Tim and Soli a golden opportunity to choose a great new collection by putting on a fashion show just for them. I've handpicked some brilliant young London designers who make clothes especially for the fashion rebel. Their collections will be exclusive to our Brighton shop and it won't break the bank either, with a top retail price of £100. I brought you here to show you some collections I think you should have in your shop. OK. That fit totally with the customer. And I think by looking at it here on the catwalk, it should go in yeah. and you should start to feel it. OK, guys. Mm -hmm. 
This is definitely edgier than the stuff they're used to. But these clothes stand out and they will stop people in their tracks when they walk past the window. It's all about getting people inside that shop. Yeah. Yeah. Superb. <laughs> yeah. Why do you love that so much? Because you're getting the feel <laughs> for it, aren't I you? I love that. I want to give them some sexy vintage dresses. A few classic pieces with a twist of individuality. And some kooky T-shirts that are just right for that fashion rebel. That's the sort of T-shirts I'd like to see in your shop, as opposed to those little one-liners. <laughs> Fabulous colours, really good. What do you think? I love it. I think it's fantastic. Just as I feared, there's a sticking point. Money. They're not willing to make a move from their cheap throwaway fashion, even though it's breaking their business. Can I ask you how much they sell for? Uh, wholesale price, the green dress is 30 and the black and white is 20 So obviously in the shop I get the green one 65 70 Um... Um, <laughs> I think seventy pounds, as we speak. I think for us it's a bit expensive. What's the most expensive dress you've sold? Uh, forty pounds. Really? Yes. I'm not used to being stuck for words, but I can't believe that they think people won't pay over forty pound for a designer dress in Brighton. They already know their tribe will spend twice that. They need to get with it. I can see why um, they are the price yeah, they are. Yeah, I can are. see why yeah. they're the price they are. There's a lot of work uh, that yeah. goes into them. Yes. Um, it, it scares the pants off me, quite frankly, yeah. that sort of money. You are scared, and that's why you've been buying so safe that it's boring. People just don't want to come there anymore. And actually, really good buying is about having the right eye and the style to pick it out. And it doesn't matter what I do with your business. It doesn't matter how much I make that shop fantastic, the windows stop, if you haven't got the right product in there and that hasn't been cherry-picked by you guys, then you aren't going to have a business. So this is really important. This is crucial. It's now time to step outside their comfort zone. Before they leave, I want them to choose and buy Juju's new designer collection. So, Lee Tim, this is Alex, and Alex is my fashion scout. Who's going to help you with any of the collection, prices and range? Any questions that you want to ask on it? What I want you to do now is to go through the collections and pick out the pieces you genuinely want to buy for your shop. OK? Mm -hmm. um, mm, you don't like that? I don't know, I just think they're a bit too way out. No, I like the long-haired one. No, that one. That is something that I just would never pick out. We are going to argue We're on possibly going to disagree a little bit on this. The buying bit was really stressful for me. And in all honesty, I really felt out of my depth. I really, really did. I'd probably go for that one. It was that price thing for me. You know, my, my prices are just shooting up big time overnight. I just think it's too much. I think that's enough. Really? Yeah. I was just so wary and reserved and just scared, if I may use it. The word scared always comes into it. I, that's how I've been feeling. Maybe a top. Finally, after two hours of should I or shan't I, Tim and Soli have decided on a small selection of pieces. It's not quite the daring transformation I'd hoped for, but at least it's a good collection. I think you've done a good job, you know? I actually feel really happy because I wasn't sure you'd be able to do this, in all honesty, and I think you have been able to do it. And what's even more important, get excited and passionate and get it. Because that would have been a killer if not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, that could have been you standing at that catwalk and just thinking, what the hell? hell. You know? No, it could have been. It could have been. I'm, I'm excited. I like it. I'll wear half of it myself, so it's good. Now you've just got to write the old check out. For a couple who have played it safe for so long, going in this new direction is a major step. There we go. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank you. OK. I felt that I'm ready to take the risk. I'm ready to take that chance and move on up. And that's why that chequebook came out. And 
I signed, but admittedly I signed very quickly before I changed my mind. <laughs> In the last three weeks, I've brought Tim and Soli up to date on fashion and who they should be selling to. I've also got them inspired to work on lighting and design to create a destination shop for Brighton's fashion rebels. But there's still one major problem. One of the most important parts of the shop's image is their name. For me, Juju is all wrong because it's an African word on a zebra painted shop, but nothing they sell is African. If we're really going to make this a fashion destination, I think we need to ditch it once and for all. It's confusing. Me and my colleague Peter, we've come up with a, a new name and a new campaign, marketing campaign actually, for Juju. But I'm feeling that Soli, she doesn't like change and she's quite safe, so I'm, I just don't know how she's going to take this. So it should be interesting. So I'll let you do the nice, softly, softly approach. And what just, are you going to do? I'm just be gentle like I normally am with them all. <laughs> Soli, let me introduce you to Peter, Soli and Tim. Peter works hi. with me. Nice, nice to meet you. Hi. And, hi. Um, hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Peter is a, a particular expert on branding. And uh, Peter and I have been looking at what we do with the name Juju. Yeah. What do you do? Well, we have to think whether this is a name that's going to take you forward to the next level for the boutique. When we looked at your business, the thing that struck us was the fact that, yes, it's a bit, um, it's very African, but these stripes are pretty unique. And it's certainly the thing that most of the people in Brighton spoke to us about, is that I've seen the stripes, I've seen the store with the stripes. So we then looked at the name. You put Brighton Stripe on it, and it's just a clever, confident statement of this is what we do, and we're in Brighton. The thought of losing the name Juju is just, it's, I can't even, possibly entertain that idea. Juju is everything that Tim and I have been about in the last 13 years. What I've tried to do, and Peter's tried to do, is to look at how we make that stripe fashionable. Yeah. So what we've done is we've taken it and put it into great little t-shirts. So make my night bright and stripe, etc, etc. So you're using language and you're using the power of your brand to create hopefully limited edition t-shirts that you can produce yourselves. It's just by, by changing the name it suddenly feels that we're not working on our shop anymore. We're actually closing down Juju mm. and we are reopening as another shop. I'm gobsmacked. <laughs> I mean, I am so shocked. shocked, I can't actually tell you. It's kind of like closing down a major... I can't... Part of our life. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... It, it's just... Such an end. Can, can, we, we'll, we'll listen gladly to what, listen. what you have to say. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not done it yet. It's just a, it's ideas that we feel would help you make money. I feel as if I've failed, you know, I've failed it and it just can't go any further. And I've got to say goodbye to it. And <laughs> I just don't know whether I'm ready. I, but I'm really interested in your so ideas listen, as well. Listen, listen, Sony. Sony, Sony. Sony. Sure. This is your sure. choice. Ultimately, you can take my advice, you can take my thoughts, you can take Peter's, your choice. That went down well, didn't it? God, I just didn't expect her to be so upset. I mean, I do understand that people are emotionally connected to the name of their business. I do get that, and she's put a lot of effort in, but, but Juju just is the wrong name and it isn't cool. Um, and they're making a mistake. But, you know, that's their choice. Tim and Soli may not have taken my advice about the name, but at least they've agreed to the idea of designing some cool stripy t-shirts to sell in their stripy shop. I think this is a better alternative to those bad taste baby tees, but unfortunately now Tim's made one, he's not convinced. They're not going to sell. They're not going to fucking sell. There's no well, way. No, I think they are not going to sell. I think that's really negative. I think we should definitely, definitely try it. You know, we have you been... You know what? I'm, I can't even bring myself to. It's... It, it's shit. I really think, at this stage, I think you should definitely try three or four designs. I'll do Put the two upstairs. strike one and I'm not doing any more. Put because... it upstairs. It's no point no. doing one. It Soli, doesn't make I'm sense. I'm embarrassed. Why don't you just try it? Tim, don't be stupid. No. You can't do one. That's just ridiculous. That's more embarrassing, just doing one. There's no theme there. At least do two or three. Just run it for a limited period only. First you know 50 t-shirts. Save your breath, because I'm not going to do them. 
This is just going to be one teeny weeny section of it's it. It's going to be the shittiest label in this section. Who cares? Fine. I so I'm not going to do it. it. I'm not going to do it. Oh, I'm not going to do it. Whatever. Whatever. Fuck it. Don't do it. I'm really pissed off with him. I hear what he's saying, but to have come this far, to have woken up at bloody five in the morning, you know, and put the screens together, and then say, oh, I'm not doing it, I'm not convinced, I'm really annoyed. There's just a week to go before Juju's relaunch and things aren't going to plan. For there to be any hope they'll get Juju back in the black, they need to focus on the huge task ahead. Just like the fabulous lounge lover bar in London, we need to create a major talking point to help turn the shop into a destination. My plan is to play to Tim's creative strengths. I think a very unique idea is to bespoke each of the fitting rooms with a completely different feel. I think it's a great idea. I think yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Fantastic. I've commissioned a couple of artists, first of all, to do two of them. And the third one I want mm. you to do. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I want you to do that and have that as yours. How do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll give it a go. Without a doubt, yeah. I've, I've, I can come up with a million ideas. Probably all of them crap, but uh, definitely. But if Tim is going in a new, cool direction, he's going to have to let go of his dated artwork. Oh. Bye, Sharky. I think we should have a fitting send-off for the old Juju. I'm as sweat as I get. OK, well, I'm going in. <laughs> See, the sad fact is that Sharky is no longer the right image for our boutique. Are you no. ready for this? I am. You I okay? am ready. I'm, I'm, if, you know, mixed emotions. He's been with us for a long time, to be honest with you. But you know what? Now that I've got him off the wall, it looks so bloody tatty. Yeah. I can't believe we've had it up there for so long. Oh. Bye, Sharky, mate. Bye, Sharky. Go, Go Tim. Go and play with your friends. Ooh. Is it cold? It's <laughs> fucking freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Tim. Say goodbye. Yesterday's shop. Bye, Sharky. Bye. That's a nice way to go, though. It is, actually. Nice I, I have to say. Well done, mate. He's gone. He has. Oh, it's a nice way to go, Tim. Now, time for us to go. I'm really proud of you. After four weeks of careful thought and planning, today we finally say bye to the old and hello to the new. The prison grills have to go, and the windows are given their first wash in the past year. Filthy, aren't they? I've decided to reinforce the black and white stripes theme in the shop's interior. And I'm adding some great lighting touches to show off the clothes and the new art-inspired changing room. This could be disastrous. Tim's got his creative juices flowing and he's decided to recreate Brighton Beach. I've got a big frame here and basically I'm, I'm going to fill it up with... Pebbles, representation of Brighton Beach, obviously. I'm going to get to the top and then it's going to crack and I'm going to have to start all over again. So, uh, but I do have a plan B. It's just that plan B's crap. So, <laughs> I'm really hoping plan A works. Unfortunately for Tim, plan A is showing signs of um, coming apart at the seams. Oh, did you hear something? Well, it you didn't. Did you really hear a crack? I heard something. Oh, God. Sorry, mate. Um, what's the do something? I'll take this off. Shit. Oh, my God. Is that what you're hearing? Tim, I'm getting really <laughs> stressed out of my life. I'm not joking. Oh, shit. It's gone. I'm not 
As long as Tim's glass frame doesn't come crashing down, there's only one thing missing for the new Juju, and that's the customers. I've asked Tim to think about how he's going to get the fashion rebels interested in tomorrow's relaunch. Like many small businesses, he clearly doesn't have the cash to get Kate Moss in his ad campaign, but apparently he's got a top secret plan to make a big noise about the new shop. I don't know what Tim's up to. He's asked me to meet him in the square, 6.15, wearing stripes. I'm wearing my stripes and I'm quite cold, so I'm waiting for him. I've got this crazy idea to get everybody together, get everybody's attention, hand out a load of flyers and basically get as many people down to the shop for the relaunch as possible. Don't know whether it's going to work. We'll see. Hey, Mary, what are you doing here? <laughs> you asked me to be here, Tim, so I'm waiting for you. Well, what are you doing? Well, vive la stripe. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to try something. I don't think this is going to work, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> if they can get that attention for their shop, everybody has stopped here, we might be in business. Finally, it all becomes clear. Having stopped everyone in their tracks, Tim's team of promoters start handing out the flyers. It's like what it is. It's a launch of a party. <laughs> and a new shop down in the lanes. Here we go, try one. Thank you very much. Come down, yeah? Can I have one, please? I want to know what you're doing. Yeah, sure. Thank you very Here much. Juju. Juju. New designers, new look, new Brighton, great tunes, free booze, hot chicks, tasty lads. Your mum says your dad says, why not be a little bit arty and head right on down to the opening party? Fantastic, yeah? It was brilliant. Just, just in that short space of time, everybody was like, just stop, you know? It was, just, <laughs> it, was it was a bit mad. I've never felt so ridiculous in all my life. But has all the insanity worked? It was very strange, but all of a sudden there was this foghorn and a random group of people fighting with sticks of rock, I think, to advertise a shop. It's quite effective. Well, they gave me this invite and I think I'm definitely going to go tomorrow. It'll be really fun. Nice thing to happen. Tim may have got the fashion rebels interested in the shop, but with less than 12 hours to go until the opening, he's got a major problem. <laughs> it's a bit of a kisser, but there you go. This shit happens. My God. I guess it didn't work. Oh. Well, it took the some of the pebbles came out. It brought the glass downwards with it, and it just it just completely uh, gave out. Maybe it wasn't such a great idea. I just hope the relaunch goes smoother. It's the opening day of the new Juju. Tim and Soli have spent the entire night getting the shop ready. And whilst I helped Tim complete the finishing touches, I've sent Soli off for a much needed style update. If she wants to sell clothes to the fashion rebel, she needs to look the part. Oh, look at you. Wow, look at the shop. <laughs> Look Hello. At you. That looks great. Do you like it? You look fantastic. Do you like it? <laughs> look down. Don't touch. Look down. Don't look down. touch. Oh, I can't touch. No. What do you want? I'm just looking at the colours. That's amazing. I just love it. Yeah. I feel really good. I I love the shop. I, I think know, the, the shop looks. The brilliant. shop looks absolutely fantastic. The new shop has now become a beacon of cutting-edge fashion. The old mishmash of second-hand and throw-away clothes is gone, and in its place is a cool and individual boutique with a clear signature. When I walk through this door, I really get a feel of a collection. That's so key. 
This starts to feel like a professional fashion boutique. Amazingly, only a quarter of the collection is new. By mixing the old and new, we give the safer pieces a facelift and we make them cool by association. You start to see how some of the new designers work with your more commercial pieces. Definitely. The new fitting rooms will become a great talking point and something people will come to Juju to see. And crucially, it's really got Tim creatively involved in the shop again. I think they look amazing and I think my changing room looks rather good now. No, I actually do. <laughs> but what happened to the glass? I mean, I like this. Well, you remember I had some uh, doubts about the safety aspect. Well, I, I, I was basically going to reduce the, um, the, the depth of the frame, so I started taking the pebbles out and it cracked. So uh, I, ju I just did it in a slightly different way and it look I think it looks great. I like it. I think it's yeah. fun. If I'm standing in here, I will, that will make me smile. There's a kind <laughs> yeah. of nice energy coming from it. I like it. I just think it, it works. It was, it was fun to make and I think that comes through. Yeah. Yeah. And look at that lighting. You know, they was simple and I can see myself, you know. Mm. I can see this colour, the collection. It looks great. The new juju is flooded with light and there's a real sense of space. Five weeks ago, it was as dark as Dracula's coffin. Now, it's just a joy to shop in here. I know you probably think, oh my God, I've got a ballroom down here. But uh, you haven't. We've still got the same amount of merchandise out, but we've cleverly done that. And it's so lovely for a customer to walk and decide, do I go that way, do I go that way, do I go this way, do I go that way? And now, what I'm most proud of, the window display. The lighting installation is yet another talking point. While before their window displays were trying to please the world and his wife, they're now making a strong fashion statement. And that's what a destination place is all about. Amazing. It's just the most amazing visual. Come and join us. Oh, my God. You know how you stand back here and you just see your collection, your key pieces? It's a professional business, isn't it? I cannot believe it. Isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Fantastic. How do you feel about standing in front of here and saying, this is my shop, Juju? Exceedingly proud. There's just one more thing I want to do before we open. Give Soli a new look for her new shop. You've got a right old pair of knockers <laughs> on you, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, you This oh. is way too tight. I need a laugh. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, isn't that brilliant, that dress? Oh, I love it. So, that looks amazing. You Do you know something, it. Mary? I actually love the dress. I think it's really flattering. I think it works amazingly well, because, first of all, your body shape just looks fantastic in that. It's so bright, it's so vibrant and quirky, and so you. But more importantly, Sally, this is what you're selling. Yes. This is the image that you're selling, and I just think if I came in and saw you looking that fabulous, I would try that dress on. And now for the moment of truth. We're now officially open, so come on in! Come on in! Hello there! After five weeks of blood, sweat and Soli's tears, the new Juju is open for business. There's some real fun stuff on that, the striped stuff as well over there. And it looks like Tim's radical marketing campaign has worked. The fashion rebels are pouring into the shop. Shades off your tattoo nicely. Oh, wow. Love that. Try that on. Absolutely try that on. Change me straight ahead. It's just really nice to stand here and start to see these girls coming in. Like now, coming in the door, who you know are your tribe. Hi, girls. You all right? Not only are the right customers coming in, but they love the new collection. Oh, brilliant. It's amazing. That looks fantastic. The great thing is that they've started to get the right people through the door who I just know wouldn't have stepped over that threshold before. Well, actually, the dress I'm wearing... Soli is getting a lot of attention wearing one of her sexy new dresses. It's a great way to promote the new stock. There we go. If I can just get a pin number from you there. And even the stripy-themed T-shirts that Tim designed himself and thought would never sell are being snapped up. Lovely. A fine choice. Change your room just over there in the corner. One of yours. Okay. The 
designer. Meet the designer. Well, I think that looks fantastic. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm going to take it. It's wonderful to see the turnaround in Tim and Soli. They're actually enjoying running a shop again. They were both so lazy because they were demotivated and they're a little bit depressed. I mean, that, that is how you do behave. You know, they, they didn't want to get out of bed, literally. And um, now, I'm just so happy that they've got that motivation back. Thank you. Nice to, nice to meet you. We'll see you soon. It's been a great start. All the hard work for the relaunch has paid off. But if Juju want to survive the competition, this is only the beginning. It's been a month since I left. I'm dying to see how Tim and Soli are getting on and if they've really changed their ways. I'm going to catch these two, because they better be in that shop at Dead on Ted. I wouldn't catch you in the <laughs> shop, but I've got you. Oh, what? Hi, yeah. team. We've been here for 15 team minutes Juju. already. Have you? God, you, you have. How are you doing? Oh, I nice. want to know how well the designer collection has been selling since I've been away. I say Lawrence has done superbly well for us. Actually, shit, I think we've sold out. Brilliant. They are actually on... Oh, there's one item. Oh. <laughs> one item left. What about those, the dresses that you weren't going to buy? Those have been fantastic. We've had poor students trying them on and going, oh, if it was £20, I'd buy it. They put it back, they, they come back five minutes later with their boyfriend, try it on again and buy it. So the new stock's doing well, but what about the bottom line? The week after uh, the relaunch was the best uh, week we've actually had for about two years. Brilliant. Every single day was excellent, you know, it just started on a real high and then suddenly we're just like, wow, like catapulted back into, you know, <laughs> heaven. <laughs> you know? I think what is so important here is, is our frame of mind. Yeah. We, we, are, we are different people to, to who we were a, a month ago, you know, and the way we look at the business now is just so completely different and, and I'm loving it. It feels that someone in this shop really knows how to coordinate and pull together great fashion merchandising. Um, do you remember when you first met me, you said, do you think you know about fashion? Actually, no, your exact words were, do you think you know about fashion? <laughs> what do you think now? <laughs> I do think you know about fashion, Sophie. <laughs> and you know what I think you know about? I think you know about your fashion. And that's what you're selling. I feel proud. I've... I feel really proud of... I'm really glad I did this, you know. Initially, I didn't want to do this because, in a way, it was like, why would I need someone else's help? You know, I'm in control. How dare someone who doesn't even know me come into my business, take over it and tell me what to do? But I think what this has given me is it's given me my business back and it's given me the desire to be at the helm. And I just feel at the helm again. Suddenly I see, Suddenly I see. This is Enjoy it. Be creative. Yeah. But most of all, be Tim. Thank you very much indeed. And be Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Enjoy, my darling. So all right? Yeah. My pleasure. Okay. There's no stopping Juju now. But if I'm to save all our high streets from looking the same, I've still got a hell of a lot to do. And Mary's mission continues next week when a failing boutique in Surrey needs to ditch the fluffy slippers and plastic flowers for a stylish display with passion and flair. Mary, Queen of Shops, next Thursday, 9 o'clock, BBC Two. Well, next tonight, Matt Lucas, Sinead O'Connor and Andrew Lloyd Webber with Graham Norton. <laughs>